travail qu'il fait. Par que tu prends des caparabas à toi. Les deux tous sont prêts. In Jesus, my today, we wash. Isaiah 45 and verse 6. Isaiah 45 verse 6. Do you know that whether I'm in hospital or not doesn't remove the fact that God is God? If I'm alive or dead, God will be God. So if you are motivated on the ground that you don't know, you know there are a lot of people in the hospital, but God kept you alive today and wake you up. And because of that, you are praising Him. So the day you are in the hospital, you will not praise Him. If you are praising God because of His provision, the day that provision does not come, what happens? You will still be God. So nobody is motivated on the ground of His provision. We are motivated to praise Him on the authority. The integrity of God. Job said, even though he slay me, what happened? What happened? Even though he did what? I will do what? So Job knew God beyond provisions. Job knew God beyond children. That even if you don't have children, you will praise him because he's the provider. So you are not praising him because he's giving you money. Or it's giving you a job. That even if you don't have a job, you will still praise it. Oh God. He says, I am the Lord. And there is none else beside me. No more. Please open your mouth again and just praise this God. Come on, please praise it. If you understand that your praises and worship to God should be first and foremost of the authority of who God is. Not because he's providing food for you. Not because he's providing money for you. Not because you are in head or in perfect head inside mind. But because God is God. God is God. You are alive or dead. God is God. He doesn't change God. People lose their mind because the provisions of God cease. They cast aspersion on the integrity of God's name. God is not faithful. God is not this. Because he's not providing money. Because you lost a husband, you lost your children, you lost a wife, you lost things. No! God is too bigger than, he's bigger than all those things. Understand who God is and praise him for that. Please praise him because of who he is. Praise God because of who he is. Praise him. Says, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, praise we praise you, Lord. We we'll 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 praise you, Lord. Kaperiano susata la baba. Leke teterianoza. Libradushka. Pekatiana sisetiana kaba. Lususu pradika paya. We we'll praise you because we are the Lord. For I am God. For I am God. I am God. I am the I am that I am. Go and tell Pharaoh the I am that I am. The I am that I am. Tell him I am God. That's all. I am God. I sit in the circles of heaven as the almighty God. The invisible God. The creator of the heavens and the earth. God is too big than all those provisions. Come on. Come on. It's not because of food. Let him know that you are praising him. Not because he's meeting your needs. Those are, those are your right as Christians. But we'll praise him for who he is. 
We'll praise him for who he is. We'll praise him because he is God. Even though he slays me, I will yet trust in him. Well, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. That's the end. Do you know that at the end of Job's trials and temptation, the Bible says God gave him twice, right? As much as he had, twice. So it's not because of provision that we are praising him. He said, even though God slays me, he will be my God. That even in the times of trials and temptation, will God still be your God? People lose their mind today and cast as passion on the integrity of God's name. That's an insult. And they say God is not faithful. And that is the beginning of depression and mental issues in life. Because you do no longer trust the almighty God for your provisions. Praise him one more time. Come on, praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be happy in it. I would like you to I would like to welcome you all to Jesus House, a branch of RCCG and the zone the zone headquarters for SK1, Saskatchewan. Uh, zone. So you are welcome. Uh, is there anyone visiting us for the first time? You are welcome to your father's house. Feel free. Anyone visiting us for the first time? Or is there anyone visiting us? Not the first time, but uh, you just felt like, no, I'll be in Saskatoon this weekend and I'll attend Jesus' house. Is there anyone like that? Mr. and Mrs. Uh, from Regina? Please, could you just stand? We want to welcome you. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Omishore, <laughs> just wanted to welcome you. Welcome to Saskatoon. Thank you so much. Anyone visiting us, please, let's welcome them. Let's welcome them like a sister and a brother you haven't seen for some time. Amen. Thank you. Ashas, could we go around, please, and collect our, our tithe and offering as we give... Uh, the following announcements. So Father's Day weekend is coming up next, uh, next weekend. That's June 15 and 16. Amen. All the fathers in the house, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. So for that, the excellent men have organized a soccer game uh, between the excellent men and the MFM. Men's Fellowship. That's the Mountain of Fire Ministries, Men's Fellowship. There shall be fire there. I hope we are, we are ready. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent men, I hope we are, we are ready for them. Uh, the game is at the Soccer Center, Sustel Soccer Center, on Saturday, June 15th, uh, between 4 and 6 p.m. All men and women and all the children, please, I encourage to attend this, uh, this game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Then the same day on Saturday, June 15th, we have the Zono Workers Retreat. So all workers in the house, uh, please are encouraged to attend this uh, very important meeting where all our Zono members also will attend. So it's not just Jesus' house. All our Zono members will attend. All Zono workers will attend this meeting. So the time is at 12 noon. So we'll start with the meeting, then after the meeting, we we'll go and play soccer, amen? amen? So it's mandatory for all workers. Then we have another program coming up on July 22nd. That's the Family Matters. So that's a movie and discussion night. I can't remember the title again. Are we still there or something? It's written somewhere. The title is missing. So I'm sure last week, I think a title was, uh, was announced. So that's the title of discussion as we meet on the June 22nd and at 6.30 p.m. Then in July, 
uh, July 19th, 21st, who knows what is taking place then? July 19th and 21st, what is taking place? The women. So we have Daughters of the King Conference coming up on July 19th and 21st, and more details will be shared as we get closer. And I'm told there are we need more volunteers for this program. So there's a list that is going around in our, one of our show, so, social media links. Please sign up if you need to participate in any of the departments during this, uh, uh, the program. Uh, the community exchange is every first Sunday of the month. Community exchange is every uh, Sunday, first Sunday of the month. And we have the details of the exchange in the bulletin. Please refer to the bulletin. We have more details there. Then do we have anyone that just graduated last week? Is there anyone graduating us? Is there anyone who graduated last weekend or during the, the last week? Anyone? We have uh, Sister Doctor, Dr. Odeshi there just graduated last week. Anyone else? Oh, Brother Isaac, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't know. So we just wanted to congratulate you. We thank God for, for what he's doing in your life, and we wish you well for all your future uh, endeavors. So communication in church and surrounding is communication, which should always be in English, please, as uh, we have been announcing for a long time now. Uh, so winning and mission is the heart of, of our calling. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. That's Proverbs 11:30. Uh, so be an incurable soul winner. And the evangelism department meets every Saturday to evangelize. They go around the city and bringing people to, to Christ. Praise the Lord. So for more information, please visit our website. We have a list of uh, uh, contacts there. There's email. There's our Facebook. There's our Twitter. We are all over uh, social media. Please, we're encouraged to attend. We are encouraged to participate in our discussion online. Our Facebook, we are always updated with uh, current events that are taking place. So if you need to check for some events, please go to our Facebook and comment or like. Our motto is fly, run, walk, or crawl. There must be a daily godly motion in our life. That is uh, spiritually, financially, career-wise, family, health, and all around goodness of God. Amen? Amen. So those are the few announcements that we had. I'll just ask Grandma here to pray for the offering, please. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you adoration. Father, we thank you that out of the abundance you've given unto your children, Lord, we bring this token to say thank you for the upgrade of your kingdom. Lord God, as your daughters and your sons go out this week, Lord, open up the ways for them. Bless them mightily. Let them grant their heart desires in every field that they belong to, so that at the end, Father Lord, we have every cause to give you glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing us. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So thank you so much. Please, let's prepare our hearts as we receive uh, from the almighty God from today's word. Thank you, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. So if you...
So, Father, receive our praise and our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we commit them back into your hands, O oh God, that this is just the beginning of what you're going to do with their lives in the name of Jesus. The next step that you're taking them to, Father, hold them by their hands. Never let them walk alone. Prove to them over and over that without you, they can do nothing in the mighty name of Jesus. For those that are going to get jobs or pursuing more higher education, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that your favor and your grace and your mercy will go with them in the name of Jesus. No man will be able to shut any door that the Lord has commanded open concerning you in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you've answered us. In Jesus Christ's name, we we'll pray. Can we put our hands together for Jesus one more time? God bless you. So you guys can go back downstairs. Amen. Two more things that I have to do before we go into the word. There's a message from God's heritage team for us as a church. Thank you, Ma. Good morning, church. I'm here on behalf of God's heritage, not women, not mothers. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So our weekend, God's heritage weekend for our children, the teenagers, and the young adults, let me say, we are all together. We are one church. It's coming up on the 30th of this month, the last Sunday of this month. And um, usually we do have a Sunday service and... On uh, July 1st, which is Canada Day, we have lots of activities planned for our children. So I'm here to solicit your help spiritually, physically, financially, and all around support for our children. So on Sunday, for the Sunday, we have our normal service here, and our children will be ministering. But for, yes, praise the Lord. They'll be ministering. They'll take charge of everything. But on Monday, which is July 1st, um, we have different activities for our children. So they'll be coming here. And thank God it's Canada Day. So we'll have lots of time to be with our children. So we have lots of games and um, entertainment and refreshment. But being children, we know... Um, they have very short attention span. So we need volunteers, please. For the games, we need volunteers from our parents um, to be with them from the youth. And for our entertainment, we also need your support. Amen. I want to thank the church. They are going to support us. But for whatever they are giving us might not be enough. And as usual, we come to you, our daddies and our mommies and our uncles, to support us financially. So we'll be sending out a list to the various um, group, um, the men's group, the children, the youth group. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A big thank you to Divine Creation. So I don't need to talk more. They said they are going to pay the bills. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for our daddy in the Lord. So... We need your support physically. Just come help us with the children. <laughs> no, divine creation cannot do that. Just We need the youth. The, the, I know they are very energetic. Please come support the games and to help supervise the children. God bless you all richly. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you, ma. Hallelujah. Can I have the flyer for the women's conference back on the screen, please? Hallelujah. As a church, can you join me this morning and pray over this conference? The Lord said something to me that, and it's from John 10, verse 10. It says, the devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God has come so that we can have abundant life. And the Lord said to me, one of the things the devil is stealing really well these days is our identity. Our identity in Christ. If you raise the baby of a lion, a cub, with cats, it will behave like a cat. But the day that lion sees that he is a lion, then there's trouble. And the devil is trying to blindfold us from who God says we are. So I want us to join our voices this morning and pray over this conference that, Father, you gave us this theme, I am. And you will prove yourself faithful concerning your word concerning this conference. For every woman that will come, 
for every girl, from every, anyone that will come for this conference, in any way that the devil has stolen their identity, in any way that the devil has blindfolded them and has taken them astray from what you created them to be. Father, there will be deliverance. There will be open vision on that day in the name of Jesus. You will touch the life of every woman that will come for any segment of this conference, both Friday, Saturday, and even flowing into Sunday as a church. The Father, Lord God Almighty, you will deliver us from anything that has held us back from fulfilling our potential that you've put in us on the day you created us in the name of Jesus. We cover this conference with the blood of Jesus. We cover the city of Saskatoon with the blood of Jesus. We cover all the guest ministers with the blood of Jesus. We cover this atmosphere in this building with the blood of Jesus. That as we come together, O oh God, on that day, Lord, Father, you will do a mighty thing in our midst in the name of Jesus. Women will go back home, liberated, and begin to leave who God says they are in the name of Jesus. Your original intent for creating us has helped me even for those that are married, Lord. You will open our eyes to understand it and to live it to the fullest possible in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we magnify your name. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. So in your personal prayer time, please remember this conference in your prayers. Amen. So this morning, uh, it's been a busy week with graduation, praise God, and uh, my mind was kind of all over the place, but I think about yesterday or two days ago, something kept repeating in my mind, and this morning God kind of revealed what it was about and why he brought it to my remembrance, and I give God all the glory for my dad. Uh, the youth are, well, a few youths are here, uh, but the children really need to hear this. Sometimes when our parents do certain things, uh, we can grumble through it. But later in life, sometimes you realize, wow, okay, that was for my own good. And why I'm saying that is my, my dad, you know, he forced us to learn certain parts of the Bible. And some of them has really helped me growing up as a Christian. And I remember the day we read the story that I'm going to read to you, this part of the Bible, that my dad had asked. So, so when we read all of the Bible thing, the dad, then dad will say, okay, explain what you understood by it. And I remember my explanation was that, and I'm referring to the story of Jewel Shaphat. So if media, if you can go to Second Chronicles chapter 20. And I remember my explanation that day was that, ah, God will fight our battles. We don't need to fight. God has already fought our battles and we're fine. And my dad gave me a long lecture about, yes, God has fought your battles, but you still have to do certain things. It is not just, you know, magic. So I remember that conversation, and then God took me to Second Chronicles 20. So if we can open there this morning. And what I'm going to do is, as I read through it, I will say what I need to say concerning it, and we'll probably pray a prayer about it, and then pray finally at the end. So verse 1 of Second Chronicles chapter 20, 20 says, It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And the title is Eternal God. They came to battle against Jehoshaphat. In life, things will come in battle against you. That's just how it is. In life, things, and I'm using the word things, it will come in battle against you. Sometimes those things can be inter internal, like it's from within you. And sometimes they will be external. External forces. Sometimes you have control over them. And sometimes you don't. So in this place, it says they came to battle against Jehoshaphat. So I want us to close our eyes now and say, Father, whatever has come or is planning to come in battle against me, I hand them over to you. I hand them over to you. Whatever has come in battle against me or is planning to come in battle against me, against my home, against my family, against my business, against my children, against my career, against my academics, Lord, I hand them over to you. Fight my battles. I report them to you. Father, fight my battles. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. 
Verse 2 says, Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are as a Zontama, which is En Gedi. So, when life throws stuff at you, there will be those people that will help you magnify it. You know there is a battle, but then they come. And sometimes they come as prayer partners, friends, whatever. But there will always be those people that will help you to really see that, ah, this is a big problem. Oh, hmm. My sister, we have to pray, oh, but ah, this is serious. And they will say that for 10 minutes, and they will pray for one minute. So there will be always those people that will come. So when they come, let them say what they need to say. Because you know who you have on the inside of you. And sometimes you might need to shut them up. Sometimes you might need to shut them up. And why you might need to shut them up is in verse 3. It says, and Jehoshaphat feared. So when such people come to you, their mission, their plan is to make you lose heart, is to create fear, is to magnify the problem even bigger than it is. But I like Jehoshaphat because in the same verse 3, he says, and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So the naysayers have come. They've magnified the problem. Ah, you know, I remember somebody that this happened to 20 years ago, and then they tell you the outcome, and it's not pleasant. After they've told you, it's okay for you to fear sometimes because you are human, right? So you might feel afraid. But what do you do after feeling afraid? What Joshua did. Set yourself to seek the Lord. He also proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Let's start with you. Let me start with myself. So the problem feels so big. And my supposedly prayer partner has helped me to magnify it. And now I fear the Lord. But after fearing the Lord, I said, you know what? Me, I, and myself, we have a meeting. My thoughts, my imagination, the vision they've put in front of me, come together, let's have a meeting. He said he called all of Judah, everybody together. He didn't leave anybody. He said, come, let's have a meeting. So there are times that we need to call ourselves to a meeting yourself your mind, your thoughts, your everything. Because when people magnify problems before you, you it, it does something very creative. It creates a picture. When people get diagnosis that they have cancer, sometimes some of them are already thinking of their funeral service. They're already thinking of this and that because fear will create that negative picture. It will give you that gloomy end. But Jehoshaphat, in verse 5, says, He stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court. And then he said, verse 6, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? O Lord God, our Father, are you not God in heaven? When problems come, you remind God who he is. You remind God. Who you know him to be. You remind God of the salvation that he has wrought in the past. It says, And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you. Verse 7, Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? So the time will come that you have to remind God of who he is, of what he can do, of what you have seen him or heard him do in the lives of others. Are you not God? We call God and we remind him of who he is. Uh, a couple of Wednesdays ago, we were uh, talking about prayer with the children. And I was trying to explain how I learned how to pray. Way back then, it taught you how to pray A-C-T-S. 
And he says, you adore God. And some of them they didn't understand what adoration is. And I said, you go to God and you tell him who he is. You tell God you are the everlasting father. You are the, permit me to say it in Yoruba, you are the Olawo Gbogboro, the one with a mighty hand that can save from whatever pit that the enemy might have thrown us into. He is the almighty. I will skip over to verse 10 and 11. After you've eulogized God, after you've reminded him of who he is, after you've told him all the mighty things that you've heard about him, it says in verse 10, it says, And now, here are the, these people. Here are these people. And they are rewarding us. I'm jumping to verse 11. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given to us to inherit. Then after you have, you know, you've worshipped God, and you report the problem to him. I always find it funny when I hear people pray, and I believe there's nobody here like that. And you cry, and you cry, and you cry, and you cry, and you cry. Oh, this injustice is so great. Oh, this pain is so much. And God is waiting for you to ask him what you want, which is what Jehoshaphat did in verse 12. He says, oh, our God, will you not judge them? And he also said, we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But he said, oh, our God, will you not judge them? I don't know if you're here this morning and you've suffered a great injustice or something has been done against you that you know you do not deserve or you know someone. Can we close our eyes right now and say, oh, God, will you not judge them? In whatever way that you've been denied something that should have been yours. In whatever way that you have lost something because someone did injustice against you. Let us say, Father, please, will you not judge them? And as I say that, God is saying to me, Canada was founded on godly principles. And some people have decided in their own power that they're going to take us off track. So let's join our voices this morning and say, Oh God, will you not judge them? So that this land can be glorious and free. So that this land can be one of your favorite nations. Father George, everyone that has stood in a place of authority to take this land out of your purpose and out of your will, Father, please rise up in your power and in your might and judge them. And bring us back to the place where you want us to be as a nation in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, we'll skip over to verse 17 and then we can play. So this is where my story about my dad making us read this came from. Verse 17 says, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And what I wrote down here is, God said this to Jehoshaphat, because the preceding verses shows that they have prayed. They have labored in prayer. They have worshipped God. So when we get faced with situations, so this is the message my dad gave me. You don't just say you don't need to fight because God has fought all your battles. There is still the place for you to pray. And why I'm emphasizing that is this month is a month of divine reassurance. So God is reassuring you that victory is yours. But that does not mean you fold your hands. When it is time to pray, rise up and pray. When it is time to fast, put this body under. The food you ate yesterday, it will soon get out of your system. That you will miss it in one day will not kill you. When it is time to pray, get to business and pray. And then when you have prayed, you've worshipped God, you've, you've fasted, you've done everything that you can do. Then God's word comes to you and says, you don't need to fight in this battle. Position yourself and stand still. If you have not spent time praying 
and waiting on the Lord, I tell you, you cannot stand still. You cannot. Standing still comes from a place of sacrifice in prayer, in studying the word of God, in waiting upon the Lord, in fasting and seeking his face. Then you will be able to stand still. And when you stand still, then you see the salvation of the Lord come forth. So what is that situation in your life that you've been battling with for years? I want you to soak some prayers into it this morning. I want you to remind God who he is. Like Pastor Ruben led us in prayer. Not because of what he has done for you, but because he is God. Remind God who he is this morning. And when you have done all of that, then position yourself and stand still. And then all of the words of God will tie together and reassure you that this victory is won in the name of Jesus. Jehoshaphat bowed his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed with him. And I will say this to us as parents. However little your child is, however silly their prayer is, please get them on board. We have to do it together as a family. Let us sing. Let us praise the Lord. If it is twinkle, twinkle, little star, they sing. Sing it with them. Because that is the way you develop their prayer and worship muscle. And let's stand together as a family. Where if there's a problem in the home, get the children together. We need to pray about this. Because when the solution comes, and they've seen that we prayed, we worshipped God, we did this, then it helps them personally to believe in prayer. But when there's a problem, they don't know about it, they just know that the problem was solved, they don't know what has gone into it, then they think it is just something that happens. So we need to get together like Jehoshaphat did. Everybody. There was a place here, I can't find the verse, that said the men, the women, the little children, everybody came together and they prayed. So I ask us to rise to our feet this morning. And as we rise to our feet this morning, we're going to go before the Lord as individuals, as family. If you're beside your spouse, you can hold hands with your children, whichever way. And go before the Lord this morning and say, Lord, oh Lord our God, the God of our fathers, you are the God in heaven and on earth. You are the everlasting God. You are the one that, you've never lost the battle. You are the one that made a dry ground, a highway in the midst of the Red Sea for your children to pass through. You are the fourth person in the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were not burnt. Father Lord, we worship you for who you are. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your personality. You are a father. You are a father. You are, you are the one that said even a, a, a nursing mother can forget their children, but you said you will never forget us. You are the one that you are not deaf. Your ears are not closed when we call. Your hands are not shutting. You can reach down to us however low we have gone. You are the everlasting God. You are the one that has no beginning and no end. Besides you, there is no other. You are the God of our fathers. You are called the ancient of days. You are a covenant-keeping God. You are the one that rolled the waters back, O oh God. And when it was time to destroy the enemies, the waters came back. You are the one that makes a way in the wilderness. You bring streams of water in dry grounds. Faithful God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8 says, you, Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Meaning what you've done in the past, you can still do now. Father, we worship you in the house tonight. We adore you, we exalt your name. Marvelous God. Everlasting God. King of glory. The Lord of hosts. You are the king that when you speak, the other kings bow to your authority. We worship you for who you are. We glorify your name. We magnify you, Lord. We stand before you this morning. We stand before you this morning, assured that you are with us. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Now it's time for us to take whatever might be worrying us. Whatever is causing us to be afraid. Whatever problems we've been dealing with that maybe we have even given up and we have said this is a cross we will carry. 
Whatever that situation might be, now is the time to take it before the Lord like Jehoshaphat did. He says, oh God, do you not see them? Oh God, you see my body. You see what is troubling me. Oh Lord, you see that child that you've given unto me and you see what I'm dealing with. Now I bring them back before you because I know that you are mighty to save. Because I know you can deliver. Because I know you can set free. Because I know there is no closed chapter with you. Because I know it is not over until you say it is over. So we will not give up. We will not be afraid. We will not lose heart. We will not lose hope, oh God. We bring the situations before you, Lord. For where we need healing. For where we need deliverance. For where we need breakthrough. For where we need to be vindicated. For where we need whoever has, you know, done injustice unto us, oh God. For all of those shame to be removed. We bring them before you this morning. 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 Bring them before you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Riba Zubro Mushkaraba Santa Laraba. Rabo Satalin de Rikibo Santa Libra Masin de Ribo Santa Laraba. Le Raba Sekibo Shente Lerimo Santa Likeribo Momozuba Libra Baba. Rima Zende Lerebos Kuromoshin Teliraba Santa Lerebos Kuromoshin Telerebo. Mazite leke rebo zubro molita riba mazante le rebo bo here and save us Lord, hear us and save us Lord in the name of Jesus hear us and save us Lord. Reba zakaraba shande le rebo satala iba baba le iba baba yende le rebo skoro bo shinte le rebo bo hear us and save us Lord. We have nowhere else to go to for help but to you, and you have never failed. You have never failed. Thank you Jesus. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Verse 22 says, Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambush against the people of Ammon. Now when we begin to sing and to praise God, the Lord is setting an ambush against our enemies. Now when we begin to sing and to praise Jesus' house, the Lord is sending healing power to flow through your body. Now as we begin to sing and to praise him, the Lord is making long problems that have been for so long. The Lord is bringing solutions to them. Now as we begin to sing and to praise, there is deliverance in the house. Now as we begin to sing and to praise, there is a turnaround on the life of that child. Now as we begin to sing and to praise there is the touching of the Lord upon every issue of blood in the name of Jesus. Now as we begin to sing and to praise wombs are opening up in the name of Jesus. Now as we begin to sing and to praise men are finding their wives. Ladies are getting found by their husbands in the mighty name of Jesus. I mean you lift your voice to the Lord and sing a song of praise unto him this morning. Find a song in your heart to sing unto Jehovah. Find a song to worship him with. He is in our midst and he is wrought mighty works in our midst this morning in the name of Jesus. Mazeba yo promos karaba jandele rebo. Roto mba zike rebo shadeli rababa zandele rebo. As your word has grown forth this morning, it is accomplishing what you sent it to do in the name of Jesus. Your word will not return to you void. As we sing and as we praise you, O oh God, our victory is here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mazen na le rebo she karaba baba zandele rebo. Os kere bo bo li promos kono bo bo shandele rebo skaraba li entaraba. Malita I worship you, Lord, for you are glorious. You are holy. You are righteous. Oh, Gerebos, Satalinda.
Is there a worshiper in the house today? Is there a worshiper in the house today? Is there a worshiper in the house today? Is there he or she that has given the battles for the Lord to fight? All you just want to do is exalt his holy name. Is worship the king of glory. Let the Lord fight your battles. Let the Lord stand your ground. Let the Lord fight your battles. Worship the Lord. Like Jehoshaphat just magnify the Lord. Forget about how intimidating the enemy is. Forget about how mighty the, the, the problem is. Forget about what has been said about the situation. Just bless the name of the Lord. Because you have hope. The Lord has reassured you. The Lord is reassuring you that there is going to be a shift in the spirit. That there is going to be a name change. The Lord has reassured you that you will not die in this situation. That you will not be, be drawn in this situation. The Lord has reassured you that it's going to stand by you. It's going to stand by you. It will lift you beyond the miracle. It will exalt his name in your life. It will be celebrated in you. In the name of Jesus. Are you dear today? Saying Lord I give it unto you. Mighty Father I give it unto you. El Shaddai God I give it unto you. Elohim God I give it unto you. Are you dear today? Like David saying to that situation. Is there not a cause for me to praise God? Is there not a cause for me to praise God? Is there not a cause for me to exalt his holy name? Is there not a cause for me to magnify the Lord? Over your children, over your career, over your business, over your health. Oh, the Lord is reassuring you over your walk with God. The Lord is reassuring you. He said he is God and he changeth not. He is God and he changeth not. He will stand for you. Oh, he will surround you with glory. You will swim in 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 glory. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Marvelous name. We pray. Eternal rock of ages. Our father. Our savior. Our rewarder, our restorer, the glory and the lifter up of our head. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. We thank you for who you are to us. The mighty one of these children of Jesus' house for all nations, Saskatoon. The mighty one of Israel. We magnify you, Lord. We we'll bless your holy name for every victory. We thank you for the salvation of our soul. We thank you for when we do not even know that condemnation has been placed on us. Mercy spoke for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank you because we are not condemned. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because we are standing in you. We thank you because you put the enemy... To, to, to fly. Glory be unto your name, O Lord. Glory be unto your name, O Lord. Thank you for upholding your church. 
Thank you for healing our mortal body. Thank you for unity in the body of Christ. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your presence in our midst. Thank you, Lord, because you silence the enemies of our soul. Thank you because you do not allow the enemy to throw stones of separation into our midst. Thank you, Lord, because our attention is unto you. Thank you, Lord, because, O oh Lord, you do not shift us away from your presence. Thank you, Daddy, because you do not turn your back on us. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your kindness, for your love. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your light, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. We worship you, our Father. We exalt you, our God. Father, even when there were challenges, Father, you remain our God. What can separate us from this mighty God? No trials, no tribulation. Lord, you are our King. You are the forever reigning king over our lives. We bow before you, our Father. We exalt you, our king. And as we go this week, we go in your might, O oh Lord. We go in your power, O oh Lord. We go with your presence, O oh Lord. We go, O oh Lord, fulfilling mandate, O oh Lord. Glory, glory, we are, we are bold in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. For in Jesus' marvelous name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Quickly, two things I want to share before we go. The second weekend in the month of August is our grandma's weekend. The second weekend is the month of August. is our grandma's weekend. Please make sure. And uh, for those of you, so we are giving you enough notice. Those of you that turn our grandma to uh, child uh, or babysitters, you are going to take care of your baby from Friday to Sunday. Yes, grandma will not be with you. Gra we are going to celebrate our grandmas. So you better go and start looking for your babysitter. Go and hire a babysitter. Because we are going to take that grandma from your house, whether you like it or not. We will go and lodge them in a beautiful hotel. And we will spoil them. They are the bride of Christ. Let them enjoy their life. So take care of your children for that weekend. Go and know that for now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the Lord will help us. You can speak to Mrs. Oyetuga about child care. <laughs> I, I, I love Pastor Tayo as volunteer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And by the way, I just want to say this. You see, every time there is a need in church, if you see, like what our mommy said, divine creation takes care of the bill. It's not divine creation. It's every one of you. Because for, if not for your patronage, divine creation would not be where we are today. So we appreciate you. We are just speaking on your behalf. So as the Lord is using you to meet the need of his church. We want to say thank you and God bless you. Shall we share the grace and fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And don't forget, Saturday is our Zona Workers Meeting. We start at 12. We will finish by 3 on the dot. And please, the women...